what are the five things I love and the five things I hate about the E92 M3. But before we get into the video, make sure you guys do subscribe to the channel. We are on our way to 20,000 subscribers. So if you could hit that subscribe button, help me get there, that would be greatly appreciated. But let's get straight back into the video. Now, the first thing I love about this car, and I'm gonna start with a positive because I do really love this car. It does have its faults, however, the first one we're gonna go into, and it is blatantly obvious, it's an E92 M3, and it's the sound that comes out of it. The exhaust, the engine, it just sounds absolutely incredible. It is one of the greatest sounding BMWs ever built, probably after the V10 M5, but this is a close contender, and that is an obvious one. The sound of these cars is top draw. this car does sound incredible as you just heard it does bring me on to my second point and it's not a good one the second one is the fuel economy I do not like the fuel economy now obviously that is a con not a pro because this absolutely drinks fuel now everyone says this and you don't quite believe it until you actually get one and I was the same I was like, I'm not gonna spend that much on fuel every week like a lot of people say they do because a lot of people use these as a weekend car i'm actually, I'm actually dailying this car and i'm going to do another video later on of a rundown of all the fuel money the cost of running the car etc etc but the fuel money in this car is out of this world you cannot comprehend until you get one it is painful for me and the wallet and the bank so if you do plan on getting one of these cars have that in mind they are awful on fuel you'll live at the petrol station now we're going to jump back to the positives and the things i love about this car and the next thing i love about this car is the attention it gets now that might sound really snobby of me and it might sound really self-centered but when you're driving about and you see people looking at the car and they can hear it a mile away because it's so loud and they smile and they say it's such a nice car they pull over next to you and they tell you how nice the car is it's happened a few times to me already in this car and it is such a nice feeling of course if you have been watching the channel you'll know we've had loads of cars already and we end up making them look pretty nice in my opinion and them cars got the attention that i wanted as much as this car does as well and i haven't even done a lot to this car at all really i haven't actually done anything to it but it still gets attention and i love that because it makes me love the car even more and it makes me proud to have an m3 now we're going to bring the vibes back down again because another thing that i hate about this car is the maintenance on this car the cost of the maintenance and it goes back to the fuel the cost of it is so high and the maintenance as well i need to do a full service on this car and i'm dreading the bill because i know i've heard i know a guy with the same car and he said it's a fortune the cost of maintenance on these cars again is ridiculous it's an m3 so it's like m3 tax is absolutely ridiculous but i suppose you've got to bite the bullet if you do want a car like this but maintenance is absolutely dire on this car as well as fuel and we're going to bring the vibes back up because another positive is this car looks the sh it looks awesome they just look so good from 07 to 13, 14. Whenever they stop making them, they all look so, so nice. That new style, we discussed it in a previous video, the whole change to the look from the E46 to the E92, and I think they smashed it out of the park. I think they've absolutely killed it. The whole style of the car, the sleek look, the lines, the shape of it, it just looks incredible. Now, the next thing I want to go into is another positive, and that is how techy these cars are for a 2010 car now you've got everything you need on here you've got dab radio you've got maps and for me that's more than enough to have on your interior as well as all the other bits but your infotainment system is really good for a 2010 car everything just looks really nice in here i think they did really well with it so yeah that is another positive it's a nice place to sit now the next thing i don't like about this car or hate it's probably a hate because it really annoys the life out of me is this this big engine and how long it takes to heat up 
Every morning I start this car, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to heat up. It, it's ridiculous. I usually let it get to about 70 degrees and then I drive it and it heats up within minutes. However, if you was to actually sit there and let this heat up to temp because you're going for a, a hard drive straight away, so you're gonna let it sit, warm up, do it properly. However, if you don't, you'll be sat there for 20 minutes or so and it'll probably just about get to temp. It's ridiculous. It takes way too long and they should have known that at BMW before they put a big V8 in it. Idiots. Now I am being picky here, but this is another thing that I don't like. And again, I am being picky because I think the pros outweigh the cons by a mile on this car. So I am nitpicking a lot to get five cons, but it's the ride height. The ride height from factory, I mean, it doesn't look too bad because I've got really chunky tires on, but it just sits really high for factory. Whether it's just me and I like low cars and I like the low look, but they just sit really high for factory. I don't know why they did that. Maybe I don't know. I feel like they could have made it a little bit lower. I don't know. I'm just being picky at this point. And going back to being picky, now this is relative to me and anybody else that has one of these stupid things on the back. A lot of people don't like it. I'm on the fence about it. I think it looks quite cool, but it's irrelevant. It's pointless. It doesn't do anything. It's not bolted to the chassis, but it's just in the way. Whenever you look in the rear view mirror, it's just, you cannot see directly center of the road. If you want to see a car behind, you have to look in your mirrors. You can't use that the mirror because that's just in the way it's just annoying and the final thing that i love about this car and again it is a pretty self-absorbed thing but it's the status that comes with the m3 title whenever you tell anybody what you drive oh what do you drive say an m3 they go oh m3 are oh, you yeah. which one which one they go oh the united they go oh v8 oh, no. and it's like a conversation thing people love it and it's it makes you feel really good about yourself because it feels like you've achieved something and it feels like you've done really well to be able to afford a car like this and you should feel like that because they are expensive cars and if you do have one or you own one you should feel satisfied because you've clearly done something right in order to have one of these cars so it is pretty self-absorbed but it is the status that comes with it i really do like well that is going to wrap up today's video i hope you guys did enjoy this video and i think overall the pros do way outweigh the cons on this car so go and get an e92 m3 because they are incredible cars i hope you guys did enjoy this video stay tuned for more of this and i'll see you guys in the next one